once around QB1. So back in 1992, a series of photographic images were taken, and we have three of them on the right-hand side here from the 27th and 28th of September. And what you can see amongst all the other changes between the images is that there is a moving dot circled there with a little ring around it to make it easy to pick out, which is changed position from image to image. And bearing in mind the times of the images and the gaps and the intervals between them, this was shown to be moving at a constant speed and therefore an object of interest. It was given the pre designation of 1992 QB1. 1992, the year of discovery, and the letters tell you the sequence during the year. So this was recognized as the first TNO, trans-Neptunian object, after Pluto. And it was discovered by David Jewett and Jane Liu, shown there using the 2.2-meter telescope in the Mauna Kea Observatory in Hawaii. So 1992, well, Pluto was discovered in 1930. So this was 62 years since an object beyond Neptune had been found. So it was quite a breakthrough, really. Now, <clears throat> David and Jane wanted to call it Smiley after Charles Hugh Smiley, a famous astronomer and documenter of planets. But that name had already been used for an asteroid belt object, asteroid 1613. But soon after the discovery and the characterization of the orbit of this object, QB1, it was recognized as a possible candidate for being the 10th planet of the solar system. That was because we had, at the time, nine planets. We had the uh, inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and Pluto was, in course, included as the ninth planet at this time. And you can see in the diagram, the red lines are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune's orbit. The black line with the dashes, that's Pluto, and QB1 is marked with the blue orbit going around. Now, it's interesting because the orbit varies. It's slightly elliptical, 40 to 47 AU, the Earth-Sun distance. Neptune's orbit is about 30 AU. And then Pluto's, well, it dives within the orbit of Neptune from time to time, and at the moment is just climbing away, moving out towards the uh, far distant part of its orbit, where it crosses out beyond the orbit of QB1. So Pluto's definitely in an orbit crossing path, whereas QB1 is in a much more circular path with a very low eccentricity. The E factor, the elliptical nature of the orbit, is only 0 0.07. So that really is a much more planet-like orbit. And to discover an object out there in what looks like a planet-like orbit of 291 years and 341 days was quite a, a revelation. But it wasn't very long because the next year, several more objects were found in similar orbits. We have 1993 SB, SC, FW, and RO. And over the next 20 years, another 1,000 or more objects were discovered in this region between 30 and 50 times the Earth-Sun distance, 30 to 50 AU. And this confirmed the existence of the Kuiper belt. It had been hypothesized since Gerald Kuiper pr predicted the existence of this second asteroid belt out beyond Neptune back in the 1940s. And the only real member of it that we had was Pluto uh, for a about 60 years until QB1 came along and that really opened the floodgates and suddenly we had thousands of new objects forming this new asteroid belt. Now since then we've been studying the orbits of these Kuiper belt objects, these trans-Neptunian objects, and a pattern seems to have emerged 
And this all relates to the ratio of their orbital periods, their year length, compared to that of Neptune. Pluto has turned out to be in a three to two ratio with Neptune. So for every three laps that Neptune does, Pluto does two. And QB1 turned out to be in an orbit which was in a three to five ratio. So we now call things that are in the two to three ratio with Neptune, Plutinos. And after QB1, we call things in three to five ratios, Cubiwanos. I absolutely love that term. I think that's very creative. And there are some objects in two to one resonances, so those get called Tutinos. Um, somebody really was quite creative with thinking all of this up. So, QB1, is it a big object? Well, we don't have very much information, actually. We know its distance, 40 to 47 astronomical units. We know how bright it is. And we assume that it reflects about 90% of the light which hits it. And this gives us a diameter of about 167 kilometers, about 100 miles. Some people say it's a little bit smaller than that. Some say it's a little bit bigger. The estimates have varied between 100 and 250 kilometers. So quite a sizable object getting on for the size of an asteroid like Vesta in the inner asteroid belt. But so far, we have not obtained any really precise information, no light curves, no rotation periods are known. So there's an opportunity to go and find out more. And in fact, the image on the right here is the best image that I can find of this little interesting Kuiper Belt object, the first Kuiper Belt object after Pluto to be discovered. 1992 QB1. Now given a formal name, 15760 Albion, named after an island-dwelling uh, deity created by uh, William Blake in his mythology. So this was uh, published finally in 2018 by the Minor Planet Center, giving us a formal name for this object. But I still love calling it QB1, especially because of all those qb I don't really want to call them Al Albionos or something like that. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that little trip to the Kuiper Belt and to 1992 QB1. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it.